Thank you very much all for joining our session this morning. My name is Richard Harrison. I'm a director at Innovator International, and we're hoping to give you a short review of what we've achieved in 2020 to 21, uh, looking forward to what we hope to achieve in 21, 22, and providing some further information on the, the available opportunities. The presentation will last around 30 minutes, and I'll give you an introduction to who we are, Innovator International, some key statistics for 2020, 2021 for ourselves and the wider programmes. We'll let you know what's changed in the last year, because of course, some of you will have been to our previous sessions where the information will have been a little older, a little different. And then we'll summarise with opportunities for the forthcoming financial year, along with any key questions. So to start a little bit on who Innovator International are. You may have heard us referred to previously as Geminus Innovation Limited. Geminus Innovation is actually our company name and Innovator International is our trading name or our main program. Around 90% of our business actually comes from the Innovator International program, but we do provide innovation support to a number of companies as well. We became an endorsing body in late 2019 and in the financial year, which of course finishes uh, tomorrow, we will have awarded uh, 125 endorsements. We believe we could have um, achieved more given certain circumstances, but given uh, how the scheme started uh, just over a year ago, a couple of years ago, sorry, 125 is, is a great achievement. And we're aiming for more than 200 this financial year and more on that to come over the next 30 minutes. When we became an endorsing body, we did so because we were uh, an, a company very experienced within innovation. And our research revealed challenges with other endorsing bodies. Uh, that research included a lot of the people in this room today. Thank you very much. We found that the endorsing bodies may be geographically constrained. For example, they'd only support um, an organization in Oxford or somewhere else. There were sector restrictions. So they may only support an organization in the chemical sector. There may have been demands for equity, which clients didn't want. There was certainly a little understand a limited understanding of innovation with many people thinking it meant brand new to the world products or services and certain organizations only had limited application windows which caused problems so we designed a program which covered the entire uk it covered any sector we didn't ask equity we didn't actually permit equity we had set fee programs which have changed Innovation is our speciality, and to us, innovation is about doing something different. So as long as there's a key difference to what's currently available within the UK, then to us, it meets the criteria for innovation. And we have an ongoing application window. Um, we have panels every single week, so our application process is extremely quick. Rather than speaking for the entire um, uh, duration of this presentation, I'd like to just show you a very short three minute video. The reason we've developed this is for you to pass on to your clients when they're choosing their choice of endorsing body. Now under normal circumstances, there would be audio within this video, um, but unfortunately when you run Zoom through Eventbrite, the audio on videos doesn't seem to work. So this is just a very quick three minute video that tells you a little bit about what we do, how we do it and the services available to our clients.
back to the key points. So now we'd like to tell you about the key statistics from 2020, 2021. Um, and here we are looking at the, um, it's a combination of the financial year and the actual year, I'll tell you which as we go through. So in the last financial year, <clears throat> we had 765 applications. 552 of those were direct from applicants, 213 were referred either from um, uh, immigration specialists or business plan writers. So 72% of our applications come direct. However, this is where it gets very, very interesting. Of those, only uh, of those we gave 125 endorsements, only 20 of them were actually awarded to the direct applicants and 95 of them were awarded to the referred applicants. So the graph here shows the success rate for direct applicants against referred applicants. If we look in more depth at the statistics for direct applicants, 552 applications, 20 new endorsements, 4% success rate. However, if we look at the stats for referred applicants, there were 213 applications. We awarded 95 endorsements, which gives a 45% success rate, which means when you bring clients in our direction, there's pretty much um, a 50-50 chance that they will receive an endorsement. And there's a very, very good reason for that. When we receive direct applications, we get anything and everything. We get people who are um, who are who are who are who, are, who, are, who, are, who may have a very early stage new idea, people taking a chance with with, with a plan, um, and they're unfiltered. When we get applications through people like yourselves, they they are um, they've been filtered by you already. You've you've looked at them. You believe they are are right for us for quite a specific reason. Um, so again, what, what is key to us there, if I go back a couple of slides. We get 83% of our business from people like you, which is why these relationships are so, so important to us. So moving on, breaking those figures down a little further, 65% of our endorsements, 81 in total, were startup visas, and 35% or 44 endorsements in total were innovative visas. Now, where does that sit in the, in the big picture in the whole scheme of things? The figures I've given you are for the last financial year. The next figure I'm about to give you is for the, um, for the calendar year 2020. And we know in, in that year, the Home Office awarded 1,359 endorsements, which is much better than the six they'd awarded when we first started. This program is coming to light now, and it's, it is a fabulous program. Of those, 405 were innovative visas and 954 were startups. Now, we're all very aware that the universities um, provide startups to a number of their uh, new start entrepreneurs as well. And my estimation, and it's nothing more than my estimation, is around three to 400 of those uh, startups would have been given by universities. What that means is out of 40 endorsing bodies, we're doing around 12% of the total, um, we're awarding around 12% of the total commercial home office endorsements, uh, which would put us, um, if not as the leading, certainly one of the leading endorsement bodies. And again, our um, aim is to do 200 and increase that figure in the next, or in this, in this coming um, financial year. So they're the key statistics, apart from this one which is the most important one to us. We have never had a single endorsement rejected by the Home Office. Out of the 125 we did this year and the 18 at the back end of last year, so 143 in total, we've had two questioned. We answered the questions and they were both honoured by the Home Office. So we have never in over 140 endorsements had a single one rejected by the Home Office. And in terms of the sectors we've covered, it's probably easier to have a slide on the sectors that we haven't covered. We are receiving more and more pro, um, applications in education. Um, Cybersecurity is a common area. Food and drink is growing, especially food and drink delivery services. And again, if we move through some of them, civil engineering, um, art and antique trading, holistic therapies, electric vehicle services is, is a growing sector. Um, and then all the way down to a fantastic client who someone in this room will certainly recognize, maybe two people who's actually designing unmanned aircraft and has some fabulous contracts um, with the UK already. There are some sectors we don't support and we've only developed this uh, list recently on the back of certain applications which have made us ask questions about what we should and shouldn't support. So we won't support 
projects with a strong religious or political context. We won't support projects uh, that support adult industries. We won't support projects um, that promote the exploitation or have the potential for exploitation or harm to people, animals or the environment. Um, naturally, we won't accept projects which could have an impact on national security. Moving on to a new area, basic aggregators, for those who don't know, are websites that pull together services provided by other people. And it's very, very hard to justify the level of innovation for these, um, which is why we don't really support basic aggregators. Um, Compare the Market is an example uh, of, a, of a complex um, aggregator, so we will support those. Just to pick up quickly, thanks for the question. The presentation will be shared with, with the, with the um, so, sorry, the presentation will not be shared with the attendees, but it will be recorded on a YouTube channel and the YouTube uh, link will be sent to everyone. The main purpose for that is so you will have access to the full video as well. Um, so again, thank you for that question. Um, we don't support projects in cryptocurrencies. The main reason for that is a very, very complex area. Um, and we tend not to have the knowledge to go into the depth that a lot, a lot of people want for cryptocurrencies. In addition, we've not seen a single application yet that presents something that's not available within the UK. So one area we don't want uh, uh, um, support. Finally, for this one, themed restaurants and food outlets, very, very difficult to justify the level of innovation. So we tend not to go down those. We have supported a couple, um, but they are difficult to justify. And last but not least, we're receiving an increasing number of applications in online training and English as a second language and in food ordering and delivery services. We're not saying we won't support those, but we have to pay extra scrutiny to make sure there's something really different above and beyond what's currently available. We often see applications that say, no one's doing anything in this area. They're not yet, but thousands of people are developing propositions in this area. And we know that just by analyzing the applications that we receive. So now moving on to the key changes for us over the last um, the last 12 months. When we started, uh, business offering was a, um, a quite direct business offering to clients. But as we progressed, we realized that more and more of our entrepreneurs were speaking to each other, building contacts and connections with each other. And it made us realize we needed something much more than a basic business offering. So we developed a community, something that we rebranded with, um, with, the, new, with the new branding that you actually see now on the slides. And all of a sudden, we have an area on our website called Insight, which is over 100 international entrepreneurs all helping each other. That's what you will have seen a little bit of, and you will see more of when you receive the actual um, the, the, the client video. On Insight, we provide virtual events, webinars, and we have our own internal social media platform as well. One of the best things that we've done is negotiated discounts for our members with accountants, insurance firms, solicitors, coders, tech providers, and one of the main ones there, of course, is Amazon Web Services. And for those of you who've worked with us before, you will see there is a new logo and a new brand presence as well. Our programs have also changed slightly, and I'm guessing this is one of the slides that people are most interested in. Our Startup Plus program is ideal for entrepreneurs starting their first business in the UK, needing guidance and support. That program is 5,000 pound plus VAT per annum per founder. It's a two year program, but payment terms are now more favorable as well. There's a two and a half thousand pound plus fat deposit. And then there's 20 monthly payments of 375 plus fat, which only kick in four months, sorry, five months after they receive their visa. We have a new program called Graduator Plus. And this program is specifically meant for graduates from UK HEIs wanting to move from their startup to their innovator visa. Their program is £6,000 plus VAT per annum per founder. It runs for three years because, of course, it covers the Innovator visa and the deposit is £1,000 plus VAT with 34 payments of £500 plus VAT kicking in three months after they receive their visa. The big change is Innovator Pro. Now, those of you who've worked with us before will remember our old Innovator Plus program was £12,000 plus VAT. But the development of our Insight platform has meant our clients don't need as much direct consultancy now because they can receive everything they want from our online platform. That's allowed us to slash the cost of this program to, to 7,000 pound plus VAT per annum per founder. It's a three year program. And again, the deposit is much lower than it previously was, 3,000 pound plus VAT, followed by 30 monthly payments of 600 pound plus VAT starting in month seven. Again, 
you'll be able to play all of this back on the YouTube link you will be sent after. And this information can all be sent to you as well. We're not sending out the full presentation as I previously mentioned. However, if you want specific slides, then that can certainly be arranged. We do get often get asked to support multiple innovators within a business. We support two innovators for Startup Graduate and Innovator Pro. And in certain extreme circumstances, we will support three innovators through Innovator Pro. However, it has to be a compelling proposition with a clear need for the three founders and a clear, um, a clear revenue stream that shows that those people's salaries could be justified within the business. So it's normal for us to do two, uh, sorry, one and two person businesses, three in extreme cases on innovator visas, um, but, 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 but never more than three. So I've summarized what Insight is already, but just to recap, it's our online community of international entrepreneurs. It allows uh, all of our members to connect with each other and access key business support resources, attend and rewatch webinars, events, workshops, key interviews, and it gives access to the marketplace with a vast range of discounted services. The other thing we're doing a lot more of now is working directly with people like yourselves, helping you with the early stage assessment of um, applications. Now, we're all very, very aware that at the Home Office do not forbid, uh, sorry, do not permit endorsing bodies to have formal relationships or they call it partnerships with immigration specialists. Um, we define a partnership as something that involves the exchange of money and uh, contracts. And we have discussed this with the Home Office previously. They're more than comfortable with us having informal relationships with you and accepting referrals from you. Now, the best way to maximize our success rate, so that's for us and for you, is to help you as early as possible to advise on your applications with no charge and no commitment. So if you have someone, um, or you have a project and you think it may be innovative or it may be viable, but you're not sure, pick up the phone and give us a call. Send us an email, say, I've got a client. Um, I want to discuss them with you. What do you think? And we give you our word that there'll be absolutely no charge and no commitment for that client to come on an Innovator International programme. One of our drivers is we never ever ask anyone to join our program because we firmly believe any entrepreneur will pick the right endorsing body for them. And if we're right for them, then they will choose us. But that has to be a combination of their choice. And in some cases, I'm sure you will help them decide the most appropriate endorsing body for them given on the information you have as well. So we now have the video that you've seen. Of course, it will have audio when you receive the, the YouTube link um, and an updated prospectus which provides the majority of this information. The only thing that's not in the prospectus are the program costs, but we send those out through email anyway. Um, we have a range of videos and blogs on our new website about our service. And we also have um, a range of videos, blogs, and business plan templates on our sites for clients who want to write their own business plans. Now, what I need to mention straight away is for the business plan writers in the room, and I know we do have a good number, thank you very much. This is not meant to take business from you. Far, far from it. Uh, it's meant to provide you with um, precise breakdown of the information we need to see to give a, a fair quality assessment. Um, it's then also meant to provide the clients who typically wouldn't come in your direction anyway with the means to write their own, their, their, their own business plan if they so desire. Because of course, we're all fully, fully aware that there are so many entrepreneurs out there who have fabulous business ideas, but they're not great at articulating them on, on paper, uh, or they simply don't want to do that, which is where the need for business plan writers in this process comes to light. So moving on now to the main part of the presentation, which is the opportunities for the forthcoming um, financial year. What I'd like to do is start by something um, that came out of the budget. And we do get asked quite a lot what we think it means when it's mentioned within the budget that there will be a review to make it easier for innovators to apply for their visas. Now, we are aware from discussions we've had that this review has not yet been performed. Um, it's currently in the planning stages and they're only at the moment um, assigning resource for the review. So we are quite sure that the Home Office don't have um, any sort of hidden agenda in what's going to come out of this review. They don't know what's going to come out of the review. And it's going to be a genuine review on how to make it easier to apply for innovators. But we'd like to give you a couple, we'd like to do two things really. We'd like to give you our opinion on what we think this actually means. And it is nothing more than our opinion. 
but we'd also like to ask what changes you would like to see. There is a chance that the Home Office, uh, I'd say a likelihood that the Home Office will engage with the, the endorsing bodies through this process. So if you have changes you would like voiced, we will happily take them on board. What I want to say first and foremost is the Home Office have approved around 1,300 um, endorsements in the last year, the last calendar year. Um, what people don't always see or appreciate is the number that get rejected. And our, our total success rate is around 15%, which means give or take for every one we, we, we receive, we reject around seven, uh, around six, sorry. Um, that's a key figure because we do that at no cost to the client and no cost to the home office. Um, and it's bearing that in mind, we don't believe the presence of endorsing bodies will be questioned. We do, a, we do a considerable job in whittling down the applicants to make sure the most appropriate are presented to the Home Office, and that is done at no cost to the taxpayer. So we don't think that the presence of endorsing bodies will be questioned, especially given the process they went through to bring on endorsing bodies in the first place. However, we're fully, fully aware that the settlement criteria, the seven conditions, which range from the, uh, the money invested in the business through to uh, you know, 10 people, sorry, five people employed on 25K a year minimum, can be quite challenging to meet, especially for a new start business. Not many businesses do a million pound um, after three years. And let's be honest, it's the last financial year. So really, they're gonna have, we have to be hitting a million within sort of um, 18 to, to, uh, to 30 months. Um, so that settlement criteria we know can be challenging to meet. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a slight relaxation on that criteria or even um, an extension of the criteria so the seven becomes 10 or maybe more. In addition, the scalability criteria is a little challenging. We can have absolutely fabulous businesses that have um, great impact within a specific region and you don't have to want to or need to be national or certainly not international. So there may be a slight relaxation on the scalability criteria as well. I think the innovation criteria will be addressed because it's unclear to many. Everyone has their own definition. Our definition is probably one of the broadest given that we're um, innovation specialists, but we still have a lot of people thinking that innovation is something that's new to the world. And that's not necessarily the case. It can be a minor improvement on something that already exists as long as that improvement is there. But I think, that, I think there will be some further clarification on, um, on what um, what constitutes innovation. I can't see that being cut altogether because the whole, pu the whole purpose of the scheme is called the Innovator Visa, of course, and they did say there would be a review to the Innovator Visa and not the, um, the visa schemes as a whole. Evidencing funding can be quite difficult. Now, I say this, um, having been through the process recently with the Home Office, finding out exactly what the case is on this. Now, of course, if we have an innovator who needs £50,000 uh, available to start the business, if they apply direct to the Home Office, there's a lot of evidence they need to provide. However, what we are fully aware of, um, and what I'd like you to be aware of as well, is the Home Office give us the um, provision to um, provide a note on the endorsement letter that says we are happy that the client has £50,000 available to invest in the business, and for that, we can use our own criteria. We don't have to use the extensive criteria um, suggested by the Home Office. So as long as we have evidence they have £50,000 in a bank account at some point within the last month or two, or they have £50,000 available in someone else's bank account, and that person writes a letter that says they will let them have access to that £50,000 if they need it, or a portion of whatever the case may be, that will suffice for us. What it means is effectively we need a single document to evidence that £50,000, not the extensive um, documents required if you apply direct to the Home Office. But again, um, I, it wouldn't surprise me if that is addressed a little bit and formalised as well. And last but not least, the number of endorsing bodies. We understand there are restrictions with a lot of the endorsing bodies. Um, it wouldn't surprise us to see an increase in the endorsing, number of endorsing bodies. What I'd personally like to see, and I don't know whether this would happen or not, but it's certainly something I'll suggest, is a better way to search them. Because at the moment, applicants are just faced with a list of 40 endorsing bodies, some descriptions, and no way to sort them. 
it would be fantastic to have a very simple window that said, um, what fees are you going for? Are you wanting um, a business support scheme? Are you wanting an equity scheme? And at least then whittling it down to the four or five that are relevant for that organisation. So I think all those things would make it easier. But what we're really keen to know is what do you think the major challenges are? If we go back to an earlier slide, I'm not going to do it now because it's one of the first slides I showed. Um, we set up this programme and we were so successful in the last year because we asked you what your early challenges were. Um, geographic constraints, sector constraints, companies wanting equity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And by answering those questions, um, we've all collectively helped 125 fantastic entrepreneurs now contribute to the UK economy. We want to further that next year, but the best way for us to do it is for you to tell us what your pains are because we can then take them on board and A, implement them ourselves, but B, if we're asked by the Home Office, present them to them when they're asking us about the um, changes that, that, that may be requested. The next one's an interesting one. And I do personally think, again, it's nothing more than my personal opinion, that there will be a clamping down on activity the Home Office do not want to see. Um, they have updated the guidance for endorsing uh, bodies to clarify this. But the first thing, and we understand fully, that in a lot, a lot of cases, um, immigration specialists have someone coming on board saying, I'd like to go into the UK, what's the best thing for me? Um, they may not have a desire to, to, to run an, or own a business. Um, they may want to invest in the UK business, but the innovator and the startup visas are not meant for investors uh, unless they have a fundamental um, input to the business plan and a significant role in the management and ongoing running of that business. So we do think the Home Office will start to clamp down on business plans where there is clearly, their words, investment in exchange for a position. Um, the other thing which is uh, frowned upon is what's called pre-approved projects. And we're hearing more and more now, certainly um, around about a range of, uh, of organizations who will design a program um, which meets the need, the basic need for endorsement and then offer it to people with money who can then effectively run the project when they get into the UK. Um, the problem with that, let's go to the Home Office definition. They have, they're not a founding member. Uh, well, they're a founding member because they're there at the start of the business, but they've not made a significant contribution to the business plan. They've been given a business plan and an endorsing body should not endorse a business plan unless the um, consideration of the founder is integral to that process, mainly because having um, a team that's managed thousands of, of businesses and business plans in the past, to run a successful business, you need will and you need skill. And we do receive business plans from people where they're promoting something, they've got no background in the area, no skills in the area, no knowledge in the area. And the problem is they're not gonna run a successful business in that case. Um, the challenge with them, um, um, the challenge then is the business is likely to fail, they're likely to lose their enforce, endorsement, and they're then likely to lose their um, visa. Now, again, if you had another question come in, how do we define significant contribution? Um, you might have to ask that question to the Home Office because that is their, um, that is their uh, definition in the guidance for endorsing bodies. But I will tell you what I think. I'll tell you what I think. Um, we do have, well, we have had overseas investor innovators, I will call them, who have joined um, UK entrepreneurs to develop quite a specific proposition. But those people have had a specific skill that they have brought to the business. Now, I would at least expect them to write the section that relates to their skill within the business plan. So in one case, we had, um, we had a project that was developing a medical technology that was being exploited. Um, um, so exploited is, is, is the wrong word, word to use there. Um, that was being developed for use in a range of different countries. I was using the word exploitation in the commercial sense, of course. Um, and it required technical changes to that product for use in those countries due to various compliance laws and so on. So the innovator who came from that country, they were putting money into the business, but they were expected to write the section that related um, to how the technology would have to be adapted for use in that country, what the process would be, and therefore it demonstrated they had the, um, the knowledge and the skill to actually contribute that, that, um, that, that, that essential resource to the business and make the business a, 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 a success. So um, for, for me, a significant contribution is the section that relates to their skill should be completed by that person 
and not a third party. We do get UK businesses attracting um, innovators from overseas. Um, uh, sorry, 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 just being another question. We, we do get business, business from the UK that attract entrepreneurs from overseas. But what we say, this is, this, is, this is not an investment opportunity. It's a marriage. That person will be coming over. They'll be working within your business. They'll be paid by the UK business. Um, they must make a significant contribution to the UK business. Um, and they must have a role as a director within that business. So it's not a scheme that's really meant for investors. It's a scheme that's meant for innovators or people who are bringing skills in co-founded opportunities. Um, I've just received a question um, that says, what value therefore business plan writers? I'm not sure what that question's asking. Can whoever wrote that question, please write it again. Um, but I, I don't understand what the question's asking. So can, can you please send that to me again and I will address it immediately. Okay, so moving on now, moving on from, from, from um, the review and what we think may change uh, moving forward. We want to know what your specific pains are. We want to, we want to know, are your pains finding the right endorsing body for your proposition, whether it's geography, whether it's sector or something else? Is your pain finding an endorsing body that can address your application sufficiently quickly? Um, is it about finding the right path for your clients? Is it about having access to programs at the right cost? Is it about having a business plan prepared, prepared for your client? And again, to clarify that last point, we do not write business plans for people. We see that as a conflict of interest seeing as we assess them. However, we have access to a, vast, to a lovely pool of superb business plan writers um, who we will put you in touch with if your clients do need a business plan. Areas we can help you. We can provide rapid and free advice on early stage applicants. If you've got a project and you want to know whether they're suitable for, uh, for, for endorsement um, or even what they need to do to be suitable for endorsement, pick up the phone, ring us, email us, send us a message, and we'll happily spend a little bit of time talking with you to help you understand what you need to do to make that client's projects eligible. Um, okay, so we, we could we could we do we do rapid endorsement requirements. We had a fabulous client a couple of days ago um, who needed endorsement quickly. His project was superb. The business plan was unquestionable. We had absolutely everything we needed, um, and we happened to have a single endorsement left out of our current allocation. Now we were able to process that application um, very very quickly. And I think it was three days later, he had his endorsement document. So whilst there appears a time where we are, where we, we do have um, a lot of work on, we certainly can respond to um, urgent rapid requirements in a short time frame. Um, maybe we could support a right wider range of your client propositions, um, covering different sectors and provide events to educate and support your client base or even you and your advisors. And then we provide we can provide videos and documents to help your clients see what we do. Um, we do, as I say, have a prospectus and a video. Um, if you want more bits and pieces, we can blog on certain subjects uh, to help you and your client base. Um, but please, you tell us. Before I go on to the last but one slide, I'm just going to whip through a couple of questions because we do have some questions coming in at the moment. So the um, so so more of a comment. Um, there are, so if, if you have people coming in through the investor route, the home office word on this is there are more appropriate visa schemes for people associated with those businesses and we fully agree. Where someone you know, with money wants to try an idea and they want to give entrepreneurialism a, 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 a go and absolutely fantastic, we'll help how we can. We're not putting off that, but we don't want the impression given to anyone that people can invest and then sit back. Um, next question. Okay, so yeah, the best way to get in touch with us, I'm going to, there's going to be a slide at the end of this um, that gives my personal contact details. The best thing to do is to email info at innovatorinternational.com. That'll go to a lady called Emma, who will make sure your email is forwarded to the right person um, within our team. So the info at isn't a general catch-all that goes nowhere. It is a very, very active email. Um, the directors do also have access to the info at, so we do see things that come in and pick them up as we see them. So info at Innovator International is the best way to contact us. 
what we'll then do is we'll then put you in touch with the person who you need to deal with and you will receive their direct email for um, calls, WhatsApps, texts, your preferred, um, your preferred um, form of communication. Um, question from a business plan writer. Can business plan writers build our fees into the business plan? Um, not really, not really, because our relationship is with the client. Um, so we invoice the client directly and the client pay. And, and, and the challenge we have, of course, is the clients like to pay an initial fee and then an ongoing monthly fee moving forward rather than a whole big, big bulk up front, um, which makes no sense to them. So what, what most business plan writers tend to do in our experience, because the other thing to clarify is we do not pay nor receive referral fees. Everything is totally transparent. We see ourselves as a natural progression for your clients. Um, therefore, business, uh, referral fees do not exchange hands. But what business plan writers um, do often do is they'll charge their client a basic fee for the plan plus a bonus fee when the client gets their endorsement or their visa. And then it's within the business planner's interest to have a, an informal relationship with us to say, look, I've got a project here. Would you endorse it? Um, it's quite common for us to deal with the business plan writer and only actually meet the entrepreneur prior to signing contracts. That is something we do need to do. We do actually have to meet the entrepreneur via um, Zoom prior to signing contracts, just so we can um, provide that, 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 that level of authentication to the home office. Uh, just only three more questions now. How long does the endorsement process take from the time application? It's submitted panel and decision. Um, average two to three weeks. Um, that's normally dependent upon how quickly you can get answers to our questions back to us. Um, we have done them in two or three days. And additionally, we um, uh, they have taken longer. We, we've actually had a client who's just come back to us um, after a year. But to be fair, they've been further developing their proposition. We know that COVID's provided challenges internationally, um, but our process is normally two to three weeks. If you need it more quickly, let us know. If your client's got a longer, slower burning time frame, again, let us know and we will meet your needs. Um, but normally we're talking less than a month from initial application all the way through to the endorsement being granted. Um, okay, and again, yeah, please, please, if you have our personal contact details, um, then please do. You'll see at the foot of our emails, we have our phone numbers. Feel free. What, WhatsApp's normally the best way to get in touch with us. Um, it's the most responsive. We, 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 we tend to receive a high number of unsolicited phone calls through the day, so it's much better if we know who you are. So introducing yourself through WhatsApp is the best way to get in touch with us. Um, if you're not sure who you need to be in touch with, email info at, and then we'll put you in touch with someone who can have their direct contact details. Um, next question, and last but one here. Oh, sorry, last one for now. If a critical aspect of the visa is the applicant's input, can business plan writers? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the question there is, um, are business plan writers are allowed to add value to the, um, the business plan, or does everything have to come from the, um, the, uh, the applicant? Now, speaking as an assessor, I would rather have information that's direct from the applicant, because you know it's straight out of their mouth. Um, you know where their skills are, where their weaknesses are. However, in reality, we receive business plans, and we know a large percentage of it has probably been developed by the business plan writer. That's absolutely fine but we please, please, please ask you to do it in conjunction with the applicant. Because let's think morally what we're doing here. If a business plan writer writes a plan for an applicant with the view of getting them an endorsement, and we think, well, okay, the applicant knows their stuff here from the plan, and we give them their endorsement, but they get to the UK and they can't successfully run that project because they don't have the knowledge because everything's been done for them by the business plan writer. What is gonna happen, and I won't hold back over this, their business will fail. When their business fails, they will lose their endorsement. When they lose their endorsement, they will lose their visa. And when they lose their visa, they will most likely have to leave the UK and return with their family to their country of origin. Now, we clearly don't want that on our, on, 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 we, we don't want that to happen. We want successful entrepreneurs settling with their families in the UK living lovely lives, contributing to the UK economy. So the most important thing here 
is we encourage business plan writers, please, if we ask you questions, don't answer it yourselves and tell us what you think we want to hear. Speak to the entrepreneur and from a moral point of view, let's make sure these entrepreneurs can deliver what they're saying they can deliver so we avoid a situation um, which in humanitarian terms is a horrific situation where people and their families have a view to live in the UK. They can't deliver their project. We can't give them enough help um, and they have to return to the UK. So ho hopefully that answers the question. Business plan writers add significant value to the plans, but please, please, please make sure that your applicants understand what it is that you're writing and apply for the right reasons. <clears throat> I think that answers the majority of the questions for now. So just moving on to the, the last main slide, our application process initially talked to us, absolutely no commitment whatsoever. Um, we'll deal directly with applicants, um, if that's what you like, or, or through yourselves. We're more than happy to deal with you, you deal with the applicant, exchange the information we need to the point at which contracts um, are on the table, then we do need to meet the applicant just to um, show the, the genuinity to the, to the Home Office. But the main process is you send us a, a, a pitch deck or an exec summary. We'll do an early stage assessment on that, advise where we think it can be improved, if it needs to be improved or if it's a non-starter. Um, you then send us the full business plan. We assess that in a panel. Again, give feedback that says, yes, we can do it. Um, no, it's not for us. Or we think there may be something there, but can you tweak these areas? That's the bit that tends to take time, swapping the questions. Um, we assess the plan with something we call a business maturity matrix, which lets us understand whether the project is well suited to a startup or to an innovator. And um, if it then meets the criteria, um, we offer the client a position on our program. Um, once they have a position on our program, they are formally a client of ours. Um, and uh, and, and um, uh, we can then offer the, 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 the endorsement uh, document. But again, the, the key thing to mention here is we're not allowed to have formal partnerships. Um, that's something we're, we're not permitted to do, which is why we have informal relationships with you, which um, is it, it, the best route forward for everyone. Okay, so that's the main bulk of the presentation over. I will like to thank you straight away and ask you if you have any questions. In addition, assuming you have pens to hand or the ability to screenshot, um, you can connect me on LinkedIn. I'm very responsive on there as well. Um, you've got my email address. You've got my web. Uh, you've got our website there, and I've also given you my phone number there anyway. So, so <laughs> if my if, if I'm slow responding to WhatsApp and um, and and texts over the next couple of days, it may be because I've got a little bit of a backlog to 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 catch up with. Um, we do have a few more questions coming in. Let me answer some of these directly now. Okay, why is the success rate so low for direct applications? Okay, the success rate is so low for direct applications mainly because we do get a wealth of applications from every single area. Um, whereas when we get them from, from you, ladies and gentlemen, you've pre-filtered them for us. You're only presenting to us what you think has got a good chance already. Um, I've got, got new messages coming in, bits and pieces. Uh, okay, so where do most of your applications come from? I would say um, Far East, uh, typically China, um, South Asia, uh, mostly Pakistan and India, and the Middle East. Um, we're seeing an increasing number now from, um, from, from Saudi, from UAE, and, and from, from surrounding countries as well. We do get a, a, a good number of, of, of applications as well from Jordan, Iran, Iraq, and um, a small number from the United States and Australasia. Um, I've not seen the increase, increase we do, if, if, if expected from Europe um, yet, but I do think that is, is forthcoming. Um, I've got a couple more questions. Where do most applicants typically fail? Uh, one of two things, they're presenting something that's already readily available or through lack of um, innovation. That is something that we can tend to help with. Um, we've just had someone join the room now um, who the presentation is just about to finish, but I have recorded this and I will be putting it on a private YouTube channel, which I will forward to you. I'm not sure whether the problem was that the UK cha changed uh, 
their, their time over the weekend, possibly. Um, okay, so where to, I was going to mention something on where applicants typically fail on the last slide. If you can bear with me a couple of seconds while I pop back here. Um, Yeah, one of the other things that we see, especially from business plan writers, is if you're a business plan writer, please, please, please pay a lot of attention to the marketing area. What really marks a client down is if we see copy and pasted little bits on, on marketing um, that say this client is going to sell through social media, networking, having a website and direct calls. You're probably right. But we need a little more information because every client's different. Every business is different. Please provide a little more information on how the clients can assess their marketplace. In addition, when we're doing market assessments, um, you can provide us with however many pages you want on desk research, but it's so much better just to speak to a few real potential applicants and give us some consumer research that says, I spoke to this company, they said they love the project, they would pay for it, and this is what they pay for it. It gives so much credence to the application. So please, business planners, give a little more attention to the um, market assessment and how they're going to market and sell the project. Um, three more questions to go. Do we accept inexperienced entrepreneurs? Yes, we do. If they have a will and a skill, we wouldn't accept someone who has absolutely no knowledge in an area, absolutely no business experience. But if they have a desire and a passion and they've got some skills and we think with a combination of our skills, we can make it work. Yes, we do. I mean, that's fundamental within the startup program where we've got a lot of people coming out of universities applying. Um, do you pay or accept referral fees? I've mentioned there. No, we don't pay or accept referral fees. Um, do you support larger teams of applicants? I've mentioned this previously. We tend to support teams of one or two for startup or innovator. If there's a compelling proposition, we will support three on an innovator, but no more. Um, but it has to be a compelling opposition, proposition that shows they can afford uh, or the business can afford to sustain the salaries of three people. We have one more question left and then I can take a drink. Um, and again, thank you for all the thank yous that are coming in as well for this. Um, okay, here we go. Just whipping down those questions quickly. I think we have one or two more. Um, many, yeah, absolutely. A, a, a comment from my co-director here. Many applicants simply don't meet the criteria for innovation, viability or scalability. And that's often a common reason for um, for rejecting them as well. Um, okay, uh, one question that to me is absolutely obvious and clear, um, and I'd like to tell you about this as well. Very briefly, we've mentioned the value that business plan writers add. From our experience, what areas to immigration advisors add value? Well, it, it, immigration advisors are fundamental to this process because we do get people applying on their own, but they ask us questions about the visa process and we, we, we can't answer those for two reasons. A, we're not qualified to, and, um, um, and B, we're not permitted to. Um, we are told if we get questions on the visa process to contact the Home Office directly, um, but we do appreciate that there are a lot of fantastic visa organisations out there. We'll often say to our, our applicants, contact a, um, an immigration specialist, ask them that question, because they ensure that your application flows smoothly and you don't hit barriers. So for the business plan writers out there, if you're not partnered up with a, an immigration specialist, I, I would recommend it because we do recommend that all of our clients at least speak to an immigration specialist to make that process as smooth as possible. Um, again, these are, oh, thank you for making sure there's no more questions there. Um, Fantastic. OK, so we have no more questions coming in at the moment. If anyone does have any more, um, we'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I will return to this slide so you have my contact details. I will thank you again for all of your time. It's significantly appreciated. We have used all of our endorsements for the current financial year, which ends tomorrow anyway, so we wouldn't really have time to process any more. Um, but we do already have our new batch of endorsements for 2021-2022 from the Home Office. Um, so we can start awarding those from it's either April the 6th or the 7th. If you have clients you'd like to speak about, then please, please do give us a call in that, in that, in that time. Um, one of the most common questions we get asked um, is, do we have any endorsements left? Now, a batch of 25 endorsements we do tend to use within around um, anything from four to eight weeks, but we're hoping the, um, 
the provision of new batches will be a little more fluent this year, so we won't have times where we don't have endorsements to offer. Um, again, thank you for the, all of the kind notes that are coming in from everyone. We're thoroughly looking forward, I speak on behalf of the team here, we're thoroughly looking forward to developing relationships with you over the coming year and beyond. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact me. I will go quiet now, but if I do have any further questions coming in, then um, I will pipe up and answer them. And again, a specific question to Ian. Thank you so much for all of the help you've given us through this process, Ian, as well. We really, really do appreciate it. Going back to when we were starting this 18 months ago, and we will more than happily uh, provide your team with an update um, via Zoom or in person as times change um, as soon as you require. Thank you very much all.